four times, but it's only about seven minutes this time. Taking a look at the miniature over the break, and I decided that the highlights weren't light enough. So I came back in again, used the same highlighted green, but added a sort of warm white to it. Um, it's basically white with a bit of yellow. Um, the reason for adding the yellow is because the green that we're putting it on is quite warm. I want the look of the figure to be quite warm. It's supposed to be sort of autumn, all that kind of thing. Um, so I didn't want a sort of pure white because that's too stark, it's too cold. So I came back in with, um, uh, it's a P3 colour, I can't remember exactly what it was. Um, it's one of the, I think it's the um, Menoth White Highlight or something. Uh, it's very, it's a very light um, yellow essentially. And I mixed that up with the original Highlight Green, which worked quite well. And that's um, that's essentially what I'm doing here, is putting that down. and blending it in as I did previously. So quickly doing that and again whilst I'm doing this I'm sort of looking at bits and pieces and spotting which bits I'm not happy with, which bits don't work very well. Um, again looking from above the miniature to see what should be in highlight. I found that there, there was a bit um, that I wanted to be more in highlight than it was. It was only highlighted sort of at the very bottom of the cloak whereas it should have for looking from the top of the miniature, it should have been much higher, highlighted much higher up. And you can see um, that the lighter highlight is having a much better effect already. Um, it's still quite rough in places, but we'll sort that out in a minute. So yeah, continuing to highlight. Okay, it was about this point in time that I decided I was quite happy with the way the highlights were going and I started putting a glaze of the original colour on. Basically a glaze is very, very, very watered down paint. Sort of any anything from sort of four to eight parts water to one part paint. So extremely watered down. And essentially what it does is it harmonises the colours, um, brings them together more and sort of puts a tone of that original colour back into um, the rest of the, the rest of the colours that you've, you've, you've used. Um, because because it's such a dark green there was no point trying to use it in the highlights for example because I wanted the highlights to be bright but that also meant that the highlights lost a sort of a sense of that original colour. So we put that back in. It also helps to smooth out some of the blends a little bit. Um, and here I decided to go back in and basically repaint some of the blends wasn't happy with them the way they'd come out. They looked too chalky. The the changes in contrast were too stark um, for me. So I came back in again and reblended a whole bunch of the areas basically, mostly on the back in these sort of large expansive areas because they're quite difficult to get a good blend on. You want they're not going to be sharp highlights because it's a a dress, a piece of cloth essentially. You want broad, flat highlights. Um, things like cloth and items like that don't tend to have sharp highlights. Um, they tend to be very sort of flat, broad highlights that don't sort of come to a specific point as such. I mean, they do kind of on the edge of the cloak, on the edge of the skirt in this case, but for the most part, you don't have that sharp edge like you would on, say, a piece of armour where you've got a very, very sharp final highlight, probably of pure white in most cases. But in the case of a cloak, you want broad, flat highlights to give it that sort of flowing look. So that's essentially what I'm doing here. It's coming back in, redoing the highlights, blending them back in again, coming back in with a bit of the medium green, blending that back in as well just to knock down some of the shading in some areas um, especially on that back bit of the cloak those those areas on the back aren't quite as deep in some places so I ended up coming back in and one day I'll learn how to focus the camera properly ended up coming back in like on this area that middle section isn't as deep as sort of the one next to it 
so I wanted to sort of take out some of the um, some of the depth of it. So I came back in with the mid tone and a few other highlights and sort of essentially cleaned up the area. Um, I was having trouble at this point with the paint; it wasn't covering very well, so I ended up sort of putting more, rather more than I expected on, and it all flowed into the um, creeks. Unfortunately, should be all right though; it won't affect the color too much. Light colors tend to get affected by glazes a lot more um, than dark colors do. So what I tend to, what I tend to do is, if I know I'm going to be using a glaze later on, is I'll make the highlights a lot higher than I actually want them to be because I know that the glaze will knock it back down again. So there's a quick look at the palette um, and as you can see there's a, a range of greens on there essentially. Um, you can see the, the highlight colour I used in the top top middle there. Um, that's that's the sort of very very sort of bright yellow, very very light yellow. Um, I just yeah, move the palette back out of the way with any real problems focusing the camera. It seems to stay fo yeah, it's a bit weird. It seems to stay focused on the um, model, okay, even though even with the blue hatching in the background. But the moment I put something else in the way, it just doesn't want to know. So I was quite happy with it by this point in time. A few other little bits and pieces to clean up, but essentially, yeah, pretty happy with the way the cloak is, skirt, and I think I think that's about it for the uh, for the skirt at least. I've um, still got a top to do, uh, but that won't take too long. There's there's very little of it, um, so that'll be fairly quick. And then on to something new.